All right, what's up everybody? Thank you for blocking off some time to be here with me. If you signed up, it means that you, you're either starting a clothing line, you have aspirations to start one, you're in business, you're at some phase of the process of launching your fashion brand and you wanna learn a little bit more about how it's done. So we're gonna talk about what exactly you need to do to get this thing off the ground, this idea you've had in your head most of the time when I'm talking to people from any part of the world, they're sitting on an idea for a very long time. So the, the whole point of this conversation is to get you guys in action so that you are past that idea phase. Um, so let's kick this off. We're talking about how to start a clothing line. Just before we get started, I want to give you guys a little bit of background on who I am and what this company does and what we're all about and what our goal is. So Indie Source is an apparel manufacturing fashion consultancy. By the way, my name is Zach Hurley, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of the company. And we were created to solve a very big problem, which is that the industry, the fashion industry, is very, very fragmented, it's very secretive, and it's not uh, democratized, right? So our goal is to be able to give people that don't have a fashion background access to the industry and help them to succeed. So while we do work with many high level fashion brands um, and they're sold in department stores all over the world, we also support what I would call interesting product inventors, right? So it's not just about fashion brands, it's, all, it's really about anything that you wanna make. The engineering that goes into our process doesn't differ whether we're making a lifestyle, you know, swimwear line, or if we're doing some really cool custom bags, right? That are just totally invented by you guys. So uh, just so you guys understand, even though we're talking fashion, the idea is I well, am always sick of the whole uh, snooty attitude of everybody in the industry and so are the other people here. So we wanna make it accessible to those that are, that are serious about getting in. And again, I mean serious, like you're not doing this as a hobby, you wanna start a business. And when I talk to people every day, they're saying things like, I want to quit my job because I want to go after this dream I've had. I want to be my own boss. I want control over my life. What are the things that you guys are looking for and what could this do for you, right? So what we do at IndieSource is we take you from concept through to the point where you are launched and past that. We have personalized in-house product development team. That's just a fancy word for saying we build your product from scratch. You have a project manager, you have sourcing specialists, you have pattern makers, sample makers, all the people that you would need to build anything in the world. That's pretty cool, right? And once that's done, once that product is done, then we actually handle all of the production right here in Los Angeles. We oversee everything, we manufacture it, and uh, we do basically any products. Uh, we've even gotten in the leather now. So I'm excited to hear about your products and feel free to to chat me on this. I'm going to be watching. I'm really interested to know what you guys are working on. Uh, and as we go through, uh, I want to hear about your unique concept. Why are we qualified? At this point, we've been, years over, uh, been in business over six years. We've launched and supported over 250 fashion brands. It's a lot of brands to launch. Those brands have done tens of millions of dollars in sales. Again, we're not here to, to help you out with your side project hobby. This is for serious, serious entrepreneurs. Now, we're not saying you can't start while you have a job. I know a lot of you have jobs. That's good. That's okay. But the point is, is you got to be in it to win it. And we're looking to build million dollar companies, not, uh, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 a month in revenue brands. Okay. We've been featured in a number of publications. We've been on TV, BET, VH1. Um, we're going to be on Bravo uh, in the next couple of months. And me and my partner were on Forbes 30 under 30, not under 30 anymore, but that was a couple of months ago. So that's who we are, that's what we're about, and our goal is to democratize the fashion industry and make it accessible to all. So why does somebody work with us? So one of the first and main reasons is resources. So you guys have limited resources. I mean, I would love to ask, and if anybody uh, does have a ton of resources, feel free to let me know, but the vast majority of the folks that come in here are independents, they're indie. They're working it by themselves. They have maybe one partner, a couple of people that are on their team, but they don't have the bandwidth to be doing everything. So what does that mean? They need to be focusing on the main things that they can do 
which is sales, marketing, and then the creative side, like kind of coming up with the idea of the product. That leaves us to focus on the technical. And when we focus on the technical, we're optimizing everything and making sure that you're getting the product that you want and we're being efficient with our time. All right, so the next thing is that we're a one-stop shop. There's companies that do development, they do samples, or, or you might find people that do, you'll find a pattern maker, right? You'll find a sewer over here. You'll find some other person that says that they know about factories. You'll find this fabric guy. They're, th those people aren't talking to each other. When you do that, it's fragmented, and what happens? There's massive risk for them not communicating with each other. The one-stop one shop nature of this is so important. I've literally done it the other way so many times and it cannot work. So this was one of the uh, most important things for us when we started was making sure that everybody was together and working on developing new products because otherwise you just can't, it doesn't work. One stop shop, everything's there. And then as things go into production, we are managing it. We already are familiar with the product. You don't have to go and take it to some other factory. We're already here. Production ready. That again means you are completely ready to go when you are finished with development and you can push that right into production. We'll talk a little bit about and more about what that means. If you guys have seen the last Instagram post that I did was about the information following the product. So what I mean is you might have an amazing product, but if you don't know the cost associated and you don't have all of the vendors lined up and all of the technical information, it doesn't really matter what your product is because you can't really run it in production. Number four is you don't know what you don't know, which hopefully you'll learn some stuff here. Uh, speed and quality, doing it fast in LA allows you to test and pivot and grow. And that's one of the main uh, problems with producing overseas. We didn't just have everything here just because uh, of, the, of the speed and the quality. It's actually in relationship to you guys getting your business out there quickly, testing it, changing it, and doing whatever you need to do to start making money. That's, all, that's what it's all about, right? Uh, second to last is lower minimums. Again, you guys probably have some experience if you talk to Chinese companies or Bangladesh or wherever, their minimums uh, are typically around 1,000 or 2,000 per color. Not a smart move if you're just getting started. You wanna produce it over here. As you scale, if, you know, once you get to a certain point that makes sense for you, then you can move overseas. But in the beginning, it is not a good decision to produce overseas, you have massive risk. And the last one is that we're your partner. We're looking for long-term relationships. And again, like at the end of this uh, conversation, a number of you are going to call us and not everybody's going to be a fit because we need to be serious that you're, that you're serious about this, uh, this business venture. And so hopefully this will give you some insight and maybe it'll even um, make you realize that it's not the right fit. All right, I want to talk about a couple of case studies uh, so you get a sense of what we do and one of the key things here is that we're solving problems. And I hope you guys will start to think about the problem that you're solving. One of our favorite customers is a company called Fit Scrubs. So their problem when they came to us is that uh, the, the owner is a, he's a nurse, he's also a veteran. And the problem is that hospital infections kill over 75,000 patients in the USA. And in fact, one in 25 patients admitted in the hospital. So what that means, people are dying because of bacteria infection, right? Uh, current scrubs are also uncomfortable and unflattering. That is the problem, right? So the solution is we worked with uh, Fit Scrubs, the founder. We developed fabric with silver-infused antibacterial coated yarns uh, that kill a lot of these infections, right? So there was a clear solution. As a secondary thing, we also helped them to make probably the most bomb scrubs I've ever seen in my life. They're just significantly better than the stuff you would ever see at a normal hospital. Um, they're comfortable. They look cool. And... They, they're just the total package. So Fit Scrubs is now exploding in growth. They're selling in 50 different uh, states and they're actually in 15 different countries or something. Here's a little quote from him down at the bottom. And this is an example of a really, really clear problem solution and us bringing this to launch uh, effectively. And he's now doing a tremendous job and I'm sure much better things to come. All right, next one, we have Grace. Laya. So Grace was already kind of rolling. She already had some of her products developed, although we've made some new products for her. But her main thing was she was in production. She needs to streamline it though, right? Why? Because she is a direct-to-consumer brand. She is selling her product direct to the customer, right? And just by the way, uh, her product is a, it's a satin line cap. And so it helps uh, moisture 
um, in your keep moisture in your hair when you're sleeping and when you're going out. So again, there's a problem that she's solving, and the solution was this this product that we made her. Um, but even more importantly, on the production side, we streamlined her production. We created a supply chain. We delivered weekly productions here in Los Angeles, and we allowed her to manage her inventory so she didn't have to overproduce. So again, one of the major risks in, in manufacturing is overproduction. Why is almost every retailer out there going out of business right now? Overproduction. They have too much inventory. Even H&M has like, what, $4 million in inventory sitting. Every day you hear more and more businesses going out, going under. The reason is they're just guessing how much they need, okay? And so the new wave of entrepreneurs are not going to do it that way. We're going to make what we need and we're going to keep fulfilling it. It's also more sustainable because you're not creating so much waste on the planet, okay? So this is Grace. Now, I want to talk really quickly about the three most important words for new designers and write this down. Do not forget these things, okay? If there's anything I can give you, it's this. Number one is empathy. Why do you need to have empathy? Because every single thing that you do, every component of dealing with vendors, manufacturers, partners, and customers has to do with understanding what they're going through. And so the biggest mistake that I find new designers make is they call somebody without understanding their world. And so I encourage you to ask questions rather than demand things or say, I want this or how much does it cost or da, 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 start to understand what people are going through. Contact your fabric vendors. There's a reason why they have certain minimums is because they have such great overhead and they're trying to do the best that they can under that circumstance. So empathy is huge. We'll come back to that. Number two is specificity. My sales team, which does a, a tremendous job, gets calls every day from brands saying, I want to start a fashion brand. Okay, great. Let's go, right? And so, but the next thing should be, here's all the information about my product. This is what I want to do. But what happens is it's just vague, right? I want to do an athletic line. Okay, what's next? Right? What, how can I help you? Again, there's no specificity. There's no information about exactly what the product is, what fabric, what they want to do. There's nothing. It's just very, very high level. So again, being specific will get you to the end result that you want. Okay. The third one is product. You can start another t-shirt line on Gildan shirts if you want, but don't talk to me about it. Just go do it and good luck. But I really think the thing that you need to focus on is your product, your product, your product. That is the main thing. And again, making a product that is solving a problem is the most important thing. So product first, everything else second. If you don't have a, pro a good product that people really care about, it just doesn't matter. Awesome. So before I get into this, you guys have a poll. Actually, I don't know if I have, let me launch it. Um, okay, I just launched the poll. Now, go ahead in there and I wanna know what phase of this process you're in. Okay, are you in an idea phase? You finishing up samples? Are you done? Where are you at? Go ahead and fill out that, that poll for me. All right, I'll take a look at those in a, in a second here. So the main stages of product development. What do we mean development? We mean getting your product made and doing it the right way. The most overlooked step is the planning step. So I'm not just running out and looking for fabric. I'm not just going out and, you know, cutting and sewing and planning it out, okay? This is a big piece of what we do and what we're gonna talk about, um, but we wanna make sure that we're set up for success, not just to have your, your product done, but to have it hit the margin you need. We wanna have a garment made for 20 bucks so we can sell it for 80, and we have to plan in order to do that. So planning's number one. Number two, material sourcing, pattern making, cutting and sewing, and then we revise. When you're doing a revision, this is usually when we have you in here for a fitting. And that's where you tweak things. You put on the garment, you say, all right, I like this, I don't like this, let's bring it down an inch, and you iterate until you're happy, okay? These are the main stages of product development. Once you're done, you should not only have a collection that you love, you should also have all of the information that goes with it, you should know your price points for manufacturing, and you should know your lead times and all those other things. Okay, some questions to ask yourself before you start. You got to know what your competitive advantage is as a person and then the business as well. If you're a marketing person, you got to go heavy on that. If you are great at sales, make sure that you have an opportunity to sell directly, right? Maybe that's a wholesale type of opportunity. Uh, 
if you need a partner that can compliment you, make sure you go after them and you really are clear and honest with yourself about what it is that you don't have. One of the ways to do that is to ask your family and ask your friends, what, what are the areas you think I'm weak in, right? Other people will see that and they'll be able to give you an honest answer. And then last thing is make sure you're solving a real problem, not a perceived one. Everybody has ideas, but again, we want to make sure that there's a real problem out there. Now, what if you don't know? We're going to talk about it in a second. One of the ways to do that is to test the market. Another question to ask yourself is, do you have the time, the tenacity, the skill set to make this happen? Talk about this. If it's a high side hustle, you have to make sure that you can actually put in a decent number of hours. Um, don't think you're going to start a line in, you know, with five hours a week. It's not going to happen. So everybody should have, uh, if you look in the chats, the, one of the first thing that we sent actually, Natalie sent it. It's the apparel development cheat sheet. Okay. If you go into the chat box of the apparel development cheat sheet. This is a document that is going to start to get us towards the specificity needed to launch the line, right? Because otherwise you're just saying you, you want to start something. There's no information. We need to know what is the product. We need to have a plan. This is part of that planning process. Awesome. So open that up and follow along. This is the first page. And obviously you want to fill out your company information, any timing, information that you have. So are you launching a Kickstarter? Is there anything already planned? Make sure you put that in there because your manufacturer has to know what you're up against, right? So, and they got to know what's realistic. So put any information and timing in there. What are your 12 month revenue goals? So be serious about this. Are you looking to do, I've had people come and say, I want to do hundred K, 500 K, a million, 10 million. It's all across the board. What are you, what are your goals? Um, differentiator. And then you want to rank price, quality, speed. Based off your business, you're going to have different things that are important to you. Obviously, they're all important, but you want to rank them so that you can have a keen eye on the priority. Competitors in, in your space, your size, anything like that. Um, so back to testing the market. So one of the tricky things when you're getting started is, do you make less units for more or do you make more units for less? So what I mean by that is you're choosing between producing a lot to get a good margin where you'll have a lot of profit, but you risk the fact that people might not want to buy it, right? So if you go out of the gate and you make 3,000 units or something, there's a good chance that people might not want it. So that puts you at a very big risk. Now, if you've already tested your proof of concept, that's when you want to go really hard. You want to try to get the profit as great as possible. So here's just kind of like an example. You do 100 units for 60 bucks each, you do 300 units, 30 bucks each, and you can see, you know, just doing the math per unit, also you can see the margins really, really differ. And the only thing else I'll say about that is be okay with the fact that if you're producing less, you're not making money. There is no break even. You're probably, you probably, you may even lose a little bit, but the point is you've been able to actually test it. Um, and depending on how much you do, you might have a slight margin. Most factories don't really help with this. I have to say I've dealt with hundreds of them um, because they don't really have the big picture information about your business. That's one of the reasons that we have this, um, this project planning meeting, this development kickoff that we sit down with you and we go through all of this because we want to understand the concept of your business, the whole thing. And um, we want to get clear about what your plan of attack is. All right, first stage of product development, planning. And I mentioned this before, but this is why factories hang up on you straight up because you call, you, you kind of demand something. You say you want this, you say you want that, but there's no clarity on actually what you want. Let me make something really clear. If you have finished tech packs and you want to send those into us or anybody else, great. We don't need reference samples. We don't need this sheet. We don't need any of this stuff. But 99.9% .9 of the people that are calling in, they're in the idea phase and they're trying to figure out how to turn that into reality, how to get those first samples. And to do that, you have to give us some information, some specific information. So we're gonna determine each style in the collection, right? Three pairs of pants, two tanks, whatever. You break down the entire collection uh, is step number one. Decide on the fabrics and the trims that you want. Don't have them at hand, go to the store, touch and feel everything, okay? Buy them bring them in, right? 
direct us for Pattern Maker. We'll get into that a little bit more. And uh, of course, what your sample is going to look like, any sewing and details like that. Finally, your timeline and cost. All right. Thank you, Patricia. I appreciate that, considering I only have the chat for uh, feedback. <laughs> awesome. So here we go. Now we have to identify each style in the collection, right? So step number one, forget your product for a sec. Or forget like, you know, the reference samples. Let's talk about the money. The number one thing that you have to do when you're breaking out the styles in your collection is what? Identify the price point, okay? So one of the biggest mistakes that I also see is everybody's like, I wanna do leggings, but you know, okay, who's your competitor? Lululemon, stop saying Lululemon. They're not your competitor. They're in an entirely different field, okay? You want to look for people that are in your space that are somewhat your size, right? There's a lot, there are, I mean, we obviously know, we talk to all of these brands. There's tens of thousands of indie brands out there. So you wanna do your research if you don't know what your retail price point is gonna be. And this is the anchor for your entire business. These retail price points will give you the information so that you know whether you have a valid business or not, right? Because if you find out that people are only willing to pay 80 bucks and you can only make it for 70, you don't really have enough margin to do anything, right? Unless you're making tens or hundreds of thousands, okay? So you want to make sure you have a good margin. Start with that. Do your research. Again, we start with the styles. I have 10 styles. We have to find and identify the target retail price point. What are you selling them to the customer for? What are they willing to pay? And how do we do that? We look at other brands. We see what they're paying. And then we start to say, well, this is $80. Uh, for them, but ours does this differently. Where do you want to be? You mold that a little bit. This is another thing we talk about in our uh, development kickoff meeting. If you guys sign up for that, we're getting into the weeds of the money too. It's not just about product. Okay. All right. Next, um, you want to talk about. You want to look at your production quantity desired. Why? Because quantity impacts price. So always have clarity on what you're going to do. This document that you guys are in has a little calculator made up, so you can go in and put in the prices, you know, you can even mess with the ones that I put in and uh, you'll be able to see what the gross profit is going to be on that style. So again, we're, we're starting with the end in mind. We're starting with the profit and then we're going to make the thing when we're done. We're not going, what does it cost? How, you know, how much da, da, da. we're planning this. We're taking control of our business. We're planning it out. And then we're saying, I need to make this product for $30. You guys get the difference. It's a very, it's a huge shift in the way that people need to be thinking. You plan it and then you find a way to make it happen rather than the other way around, okay? All right, um, that's all I gotta say about that. You can see here that you can put in some information about the fabric you want and trim. I think there's some more detail here. All right, so fit reference samples. What the hell am I talking about? Fit reference samples are, it's like our hack, right? Fit reference samples is the hack to everyday people who have an idea and they don't quite know how to communicate what they want. Guess what? I don't want to sketch. Don't want to sketch. Doesn't help me. Why? Because I have no idea the proportions or the measurements or anything. What do we want? We want something real tangible in the world. This piece of paper, this pen, these all have finite measurements, right? This shirt. And so when you can give a manufacturer an actual product, doesn't matter where it comes from, you buy in the store, you find it in your house, I mean, whatever. Then you can start to begin the process of building the line. So a fit reference sample is a reference to show someone the measurements or the fabric or the construction that you want to have in your product. Does that make sense? All right. Actually, I want to see this poll. Let's see this poll. Okay. Um, Okay, this is what I thought. Most of you in the idea phase, some of you kind of knocking out the product, but not quite there yet. A few of you finished samples, need a manufacturer, and then only a couple. So see, again, this is, this is about getting you guys to that, like the, the fourth rung. We want you to have inventory ready to go or at least finish samples. Otherwise, you're just sitting in your head. It's just not worth it. It's, it's, there's just no point. You might as well just do something else. So let's get back into this. Basically, you're right where I thought you were, and I'm really committed to getting you guys out of that phase. All right. Let me just give myself a little juice here. 
Okay, so fabric sourcing. What do you need to look for? What uh, types of fabrics do you need to bring in? So the first thing is, fabric is not just, it's, oh, it's soft, right? There's actual categories that we look at. So we're talking about um, the type of fabric. So it's a jersey fabric. It's a linen, right? What kind of fabric are you looking, are you looking to make? And what is the content, right? So is, it's linen, but it's also cotton, right? So the composition. The next thing is the weight. So that's usually in GSM, but again, you don't have experience with weight of fabric. You can just find the fabric and give it to the manufacturer and give it to us. And we'll know how to match that. The color, be specific with what color you want, or again, just use it an example and then the function, right? So is there a certain stretch you want it to have or anything else? Um, second thing in fabric is to consider whether you need something custom. I know a lot of you want, uh, custom stuff with your logos on everything. Consider not doing too much custom stuff in the beginning. The reason is there's massive setup costs for these things. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the machines that make some of this custom stuff are not even in the U S you have to order from China. So a lot of the custom elastic that we do has got to come from China and certain things just have to come from China. Hopefully we'll be able to get this all done here soon at a lower minimum, but in the beginning, it's a barrier. So try to eliminate too much custom stuff on the trim and focus on like printing and other ways you can do custom. And then that brings us to printing. So DTF, it means direct to fabric, sublimation, you're using a polyester fabric and then silk screening, which you guys know is just the regular prints on t-shirts that you see everywhere. These are those categories that I kind of went over. Um, you might want to ask as well what the MOQ or the minimum order quantity is for the fabric you're ordering. Now, keep in mind, fabric is sold by the roll, by the color. So if you want to do multiple colors, you're going to need to buy at least, you know, most rolls are between 60 to 100 yards, sometimes more, sometimes less, really. But that's kind of like the range, right? So you're going to think about how much fabric you need to use. Um, and then number seven is the price start to get a sense of the price that you would want to pay. So this is all just some tips and some things to be thoughtful about. But let me bring you back for a second to, to the fabric itself. You have your reference sample, okay? You've said that you love the blue crew sweatshirt and you have a gray, you have a, you have a hoodie and you have a pullover, right? Okay, so what do we want to do here? We want to match the the body of the pullover but we want to add the hood from the hoodie we're frankensteining the thing together okay that's how you can communicate to us okay you can give us that information you can say remove the panels from the hood increase the sleeve length two inches right you guys don't understand what i mean with this reference stuff we're not saying copy designs we're saying start with some base and then make your design from there right okay frankenstein it together take the pieces that people well, say that you love the fit on the left one with the ruffles but you want the fabric on the right so that's another really really clear way to communicate what you want i want the sh i want the fit of the striped ruffle and i want the fabric of the polka dot little polka dot on the right what does that do it makes it extremely clear what to look for then your project manager will go out they'll source the fabric on the right and we'll begin to make the patterns for the garment on the left you get what I'm saying? Then those come together to create an entirely new product. Nadia, MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. That's the amount that you have to buy of anything, right? So it could be anything, right? It, it could be buttons, it could be fabric, or it could be uh, a full garment. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just some other examples of things you can Frankenstein together. These are all products that, that we've made before. Um, Printing. So again, this is another area on the development cheat sheet. Think about what type of printing that you want to do. And if you have the artwork, it's really easy to get a higher graphic designer. If you don't have one, make sure in your, in your kickoff meeting with us, you let us know you need help and we'll get your stuff made. We'll get uh, the gra graphics done. We got to know really early because we don't want that to hold up your launch. We need to know what kind of print we're doing, the colors, the size, the location, a lot of details, right? 
Uh, you want to know whether your collection is going to be graphic intensive or you're just using subtle branding with your logo. Uh, we want to do this in the very beginning. So as an example of where you can put that in. More product that we've done, but you know, can you use anything for fit reference samples. So what, how, how do you know when you're ready for production, right? How do I know? And, and a lot of calls that we get are people saying, Hey, I'm ready for production. And so obviously this is just so you guys understand, this is what we're going to say to you. Do you have a bill of materials? Like have you already sourced your fabric and you have everything lined up ready to go for either us to buy on your behalf or you're going to send it to us. Okay. Bill of materials, by the way, is a document that communicates all of the fabrics, all of the materials, fabrics and the trim, where it's coming from, how much it costs, um, the measurements, like everything about it. Usually you find this in a tech pack, which is like the big Bible of your line, which is what we build you. Okay. So you need to have that. Number two, you need to have a finished sample. So again, if you're coming to us and you, and you don't have a sample, you can't, there's no production. I can't tell you how often people come in and say, I'm ready for production. I want to make three inch units. I say, great, send me your samples. And they say, well, I don't have any samples. What am I producing? I don't know what I'm producing. There's nothing to make, right? So have a final sample. You got to have something done, ready to go. If not, you're in development and that's okay, but just be clear about where you're at. Otherwise there's going to be uh, communication issues with you and the manufacturer, right? So finish your sample. And then the third thing is the purchase order. The reason this purchase order is so important is the PO tells the manufacturer what they're going to make. So I don't just mean, hey, give me a thousand units. I mean, I want a thousand units total across five styles. And those styles are broken down into four sizes. And those four sizes have three colors, right? You would do this via a matrix. If you guys want, um, I can have Natalie also send the purchase order template I know we're talking about starting a clothing line, just getting launched, but the production of your first run is a part of that. So one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to build out your first order, your ideal first order in the beginning. Do that when you're first planning it out. So you can start to see what that would look like. And uh, yeah, Natalie will send that. You get what I'm saying though? Because the idea is you don't want to be at the end and be like, oh, now I have to put together an order. Let's again, let's make the, the dream order and then let's, watch that as we go through the development stages and if we have to change some things oh there's the moq it's higher so we're not gonna do three colors we're gonna do two colors modify 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 okay keep your price points we have those target price points we're gonna identify in our dev kickoff meeting with you guys we want to put those price points in the po right what is that what else does that do it holds indie source accountable for your prices because if we're super clear that you got to be at thirty dollars right then that's going to be our priority is getting you to $30. And if something comes up and it's, you know, going to make the price go up then then there you have a decision. All right. You know what? I want the special gold zipper that it's going to be a dollar more. Now we're at 31. I'm okay with it because the retail value is going to be higher. Let's just do it. Right. We want it to be a back and forth conversation. So now they just threw in the sample production order. So check it out and um, feel free to fill it out and, no, start dreaming about what you really want for this run. The inventory is exciting because then this is where you got the product and you're ready to sell. So I want to bring you guys there. So let's talk about money real quick. Um, think about, so, so I talked about how important the retail price point is, but realistically, we're all people, we, we have different financial situations. So you have to decide when you're going into this venture, what are you prepared to spend before you reach out to me? manufacturers. Meaning what, what is the amount of money set aside for this venture? Business is a risk, of course. So knowing what that is, is huge. It allows you to determine the right way to maneuver it. Let me give an example. Um, a, lot, a lot of times I'll get calls people that say, Hey, I want to start a clothing line, but I only have like $5,000, for example, right? I five, $10,000. Now, that's not really enough to launch a product business, right? Because you need to have inventory. You have to do product development. It's not really enough. However, five to $10,000 might be enough to do blanks. It might be enough to do, um, you know, some private, we have some, some blanks that we have too. It might be able to do some, some different things. It, it's kind of like I, you could spend the 10 grand and like, and, and take that money, make 20 and reinvest it. Right. You got to know what you're putting in so you can divide up that money in the smartest way possible. You need to leave some, some money for marketing too. Okay. Um, if you have investors, 
friends or family members, other people that are going to be supporting you, get clear on what they're going to give you. How much can they put in the pot, right? By the way, one of the best ways to get money is you don't go to somebody until you know what you need. It's one of the other reasons why uh, these meetings are so valuable, these dev kickoff meetings, is because we're talking about the money. And you'll leave with, you can leave with a clear breakdown of exactly how much money you'll need. So that you take that to an investor, much more likely they'll give you the dough, right? Uh, someone asked, what is a blank? A blank is a pre-made shirt or hoodie or anything, which is a pre-made garment that is produced in the hundreds of thousands, typically by big companies that are sold and then printed on. You don't have to worry about the development costs, but sadly you're getting a product from another company. So it's not nearly as cool. It's not unique. But if you don't have any money, it's a place to start, right? Um, how many styles you want to produce and what you're willing to compromise on? Get clear on the number of styles. Maybe you have 12, but you only have a budget for five. So start to think about that. Uh, and then, of course, all stages. So this is a, an investment. And you have to decide whether you're in it for the long haul, basically, is what this point is. Um, and focusing on the ROI rather than the cost. There's something called poverty mentality, which is when you're, you guys ever, I'm sure everybody's been through this where you know, money's tight or you go through something and then after that, things might loosen up again and, and you have a little bit of money, but, but then you still stay, you don't wanna pay, you don't wanna pay the extra money for this or for that or just like things. If you're gonna go in on starting a business, your investments need to, be based off of the return you'll get, not based off of um, what you spent for lunch. You get what I mean? So, I mean, if your goal is to be doing a million dollars, then you need to think realistically about what you will put in to get that million dollars. And it should be more than what you spent on your lunch today, right? You have to start to think about the return you'll make. Again, something we'll talk about in the dev kickoff meeting. Third is you're not going to be breaking even immediately. So, um, make sure you're in it for the long haul, but you have clear expectations on how you recoup that money. So opportunity cost, what is opportunity cost, right? Opportunity cost is, is the poll you guys did is the opportunity cost that you're sitting with an idea in your head and you don't even have the chance for it to be made. There's nothing, there's no product. There's nothing. There's a 0% chance of you getting this thing done unless you have a sample. And so that's what we want to talk about. If the goal is to bring a concept to a point where you have a product in hand and you can test it, what do you need? You need to finish samples. You need finished samples. You need to have that product. How do we get there? Empathy, specificity, and finally product. We get you that product that you can then take around and start to test the market. Okay. Where do we start with product development? This is the main thing. That's how you get your thing off the, your, your line off the ground is by having a product. And again, look, if this webinar was filled with tons of people that already we had product and in another phase, I'd be happy to talk to that. We'll do a little bit of Q&A, but right now, the question is, what's stopping you? What's stopping you is you don't have a product. You need to have a sample. You need to invest in your sample. And if you need to take a step back after that's done and then reevaluate, that's fine. But where do you start? Development, okay? Like I've been mentioning, during this meeting, this kickoff meeting, we talk about all the details of your project. We talk about these, the fabrics, the trims, your timelines, your target, your budget. What money do you have to work with too? And we give you a quote based off of that conversation and what you need uh, for your sample cost, for the whole thing, the fabric sourcing, the pattern, everything, samples, fittings, the whole thing. Um, and when you're done, you will have not only a finished product, but you will have the manufacturing budget for your uh, inventory. Again, what does that mean? You can go to friends and family, you can go to investors. You are clear on what you need to launch and scale the business. Okay. This is the link right here. You guys can um, click it and sign up. It takes you directly to the page. Um, I'm also going to put in our number. That's our number. We have a team here of very capable brand consultants that can chat with you if you have some questions, but 
honestly, at this point, you guys should know whether or not this is something that you want to do. Um, you click on this link, you go to this page, you can sign up, we can get you in a meeting with us, we can talk about all of these things that we discussed, but just for your brand. Uh, if you do it online, it's $197 and it will get you organized and prepared for getting samples, okay? Um, that's basically it. I'm super invested in you guys doing this. I want to, I'd rather people be stuck on, I have a sample, but I don't have the production, whatever, just not the idea phase. Get out of the idea phase, do that for yourself. Do that for yourself, get serious about what you're doing and, and get to the point where you have a finished product so you really can be clear about whether or not this is something that's viable for you and for your life, okay? Awesome, I'm gonna open it up for questions. Um, go ahead and shoot me anything you have in the uh, Q&A box and um, I'll answer it. So Patricia, what I stated is that if you don't have budget to make a custom collection, you can't, uh, let me put it this way. If you don't have the money to develop an entirely new product, to source fabrics, do patterns, to create something brand new from scratch and invest in it, then you might look for something that's not as custom, such as blank t-shirts we can print on them. But again, you need, uh, to have some sort of budget to launch a product business because it takes requires inventory and it requires engineering. There's a good budget to get started. Uh, so again, it depends on the number of styles you're doing. What is a good budget to get started? Depends on the styles you're doing. Um, a good budget. I usually say you want to be around 50,000 for something like this all in. Um, some people come in, they have 120,000, 130, and it's not to say you need that, but if you start to think about everything from the website, your photography, your product, your development, um, and some runway, yeah, any business should have around that much money. Um, so yeah, I, I would say a, a good number to start with would be at least 50K, but again, it depends on how many styles you're doing. One of the ways to identify your budget from the, at least get that production part is to do use the development cheat sheet to look at the numbers. So you take the target manufacturing cost multiplied by the number of units. And now you have a, uh, oh, sorry. You take the, the, the profitability, that gross profit number multiplied by across all your styles. And you can start to see what the profit would be and how much you would have to pay per style and, and for each unit. Development meetings uh, are usually no more than an hour. But again, it's, it's, we have to do what we have to do to get you ready to go. So the, Patricia asked how long they are. Um, $5,000 is not enough to start a custom clothing company. It's not enough. Nowhere near enough. I mean, just, again, I would say buy some blanks or something. Um, we don't help with selling to stores. Um, But again, that should be you in the beginning. That should be you in the very beginning. You should be selling your own product. Uh, we can do a copy of the deck, that's no problem. All right, Jade, I know you got a lot of information you sent me. You're tired of doing customs, I don't make enough, especially with it being just me. So Jade, are you doing everything? Are you making your own clothing and selling it? It sounds like you're trying to handle the entire thing. So what, what's going on? Can I answer live on a screen? Okay. Um, great question, Lawana. 197 does not cover the cost of samples. No, the 197 is our time to sit down and organize all of the stuff that we just talked about and get you a quote and get you clear on your, on your entire process. So no, this is, this, is, uh, this is the getting you going, getting the idea out of your head. I wanna make that super clear. Um, being realistic, that's, that's not how it works. We don't do footwear, um, but I know a guy. 
So Adrian, reach out to me, I can connect you. Karina, do we, are we able to refer factors? Um, yeah, there's some factors we can refer you to. Shoot me an email. Uh, Zach at IndieSource, Z-A-C-K at IndieSource, and I can forward you to somebody. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, anybody, unless anybody has any more questions, do you make swimwear? Yes, we make swimwear. We are a, a manufacturer of swimwear, so we can help you with that. Again, what, what would I say to do? Come in, book the meeting, bring some fabric that you want of, uh, from, from a swimwear quality that you like, and we'll, and we'll build out the collection. Who can produce a sample that does not have a thousand MOQ like China? We don't have a thousand MOQ, Hans. So we can do that. Our MOQ usually starts at around 300 uh, per style. Uh, that'll give you the best margin. Um, but in some cases, we'll go lower if your goal, again, is to test the market. So the price will be higher if we do less. But as long as you're clear about what the goal is, then we can work with you on, on the MOQ and do less units. Yes, we work with creative input. We have feedback. I'm obviously extremely opinionated about this, and so is my team. So if you want to be doing a million dollars, if you want to actually quit your job, all of these things need to get started. This meeting is the start of that. This is getting you organized. This is getting clarity, and this is building a plan for your business. It's exactly the answer to these questions. If you don't live in, oh, this is a good one, Keisha. If you don't live in LA, we do it over the phone. We do it, we do it through Skype or Zoom. So we'll send you fabrics. We'll send you samples where you, you know, you'll come in and meet with us, or if you can't come at all, we'll just... We use the mail and we use technology. So there's not an issue there. We've done lines for brands all over the country in every state. Great question, Nadia. So Nadia asks, how long does the development process take? Is it up to us to pace everything or does the company direct the timeline? So interestingly, it's, it's a mixture of both. Um, I don't usually give an answer to that because I don't know what you're making, Nadia. And what you're making will dictate what things we need to do. Hopefully that makes sense. You want to give yourself, you know, a couple of months at least to develop anything brand new from scratch. But one of the first things that you'll talk about with your project manager is your timeline uh, for you guys specifically. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Very excited to hear from you. If you um, have any further questions, call my team. I just sent you guys the number, the 424-200-2027. If you have any other clarification questions, and you're serious about doing this, give us a call. We'll help you out. And let's not be sitting on the ideas anymore. That's my major thing. Let's not be sitting on the ideas. Let's get you to a place where you're ready to go with samples and you're serious about this thing, okay? I'm super excited to hear from you guys. And um, shoot me some emails once you get to the next phase. Hopefully we can have the next uh, conversation more about selling and marketing rather than just launching the line. All right, take care everybody.